Good day to everyone. So my task now is to present to you the different challenges in the teaching of social studies and the tips on how to teach social studies during this time of pandemic. So uh, the slide that you are looking at now are the different objectives of the social studies courses. Number one here is to gain an understanding of existing institutions through a study of social relationships in the home, the school, the community, the country, and the world. To develop correct attitudes towards character education, geography, history, government, community problems, Filipino customs and traditions, and moral and spiritual values inspired by an abiding faith in God. To create an understanding of the interdependence of men and nations and through such understanding, develop broader social mindedness essential to human progress. To encourage a study, understanding, and practice of desirable human relations uh, relationships so that the child may be able to assume the responsibilities of citizenship and become a worthy member of society. To learn to love one's country and admire the good in other lands. To understand and appreciate the democratic way of life. And to cultivate an active and sustained interest in the reading of content materials in the teaching of social studies. So uh, the slide now that you are looking at are the different challenges that every social studies uh, educators or teachers are facing nowadays. Number one is siloing social studies minutes. To understand the unique challenges of teaching social studies today, we have to go back almost 20 years to a shift in policy that had enormous repercussions for how schools dedicate time and resources. And according to Samantha Stearns, social studies education has never recovered from the blow dealt with it by the no child left behind policy with its high stakes standardized testing in math and reading. Stearns explains how the laser focus on math and reading put pressure on many teachers to increase test scores in those areas and for social studies teachers it meant decreasing time spent on skills like understanding primary and secondary courses or evaluating historical arguments. Social studies, says Stearns, became the bottom rung of the educational ladder and therefore the first of the core academic subjects to be modified or reduced to increase minutes in other subjects. Number two challenge, falling back on legacy materials. When it comes to social studies content, a common pitfall can also be materials themselves. Administrators may think that legacy materials like textbooks are still providing good value in the classroom, but from a teacher's perspective, that's often not the case. A recent Nusala study revealed that while district and school administrators believed social studies teachers used their textbooks, as core content for the students 15 days per month, instructors reported using them only 6 days a month. So, if teachers don't use textbooks, what do they use? The majority of teachers report sourcing their content from multiple websites, a practice requiring considerable time, turning elsewhere to source their content, can be a significant burden, eating up time they rarely have to spare. Turning elsewhere for content also raises issues of quality and consistency, increasing the task and the risk of using sources that having been properly vetted. Number three challenge, assuming all diverse perspectives are representative. Social studies teachers are increasingly finding the legacy 
the materials, while they may try to offer diverse perspectives, aren't adequately representative. In a time when conflicts issues of politics, race, and gender frequently headline the news, the traditional materials like textbooks often don't seem relevant and end up alienating students when they don't see their stories depicted in genuine and engaging ways. So teachers of history like us, civics, and other social studies classes are increasingly aware of the need for content to be both diverse and inclusive. As a recent piece in Edutopia on culturally responsive teaching notes, when young people see themselves in the story of our shared past, they not only develop a deeper appreciation of the subject, but become more civically active. Having diverse, inclusive materials to share and discuss allows students to see themselves in the past and the present, setting the stage for conversations about civic engagement that social studies teachers value. Number four challenge, only prioritizing big events and well-known names. The stigma that surrounds social studies and history in particular is that it's all about memorization, critical dates, key locations, and important figures. This generalization often results in students viewing the subject as irrelevant and impersonal, when in fact the skills developed in social studies classrooms give students the ability to navigate the day's most pressing, engaging, and challenging issues, particularly this time of pandemic. In an Education Week blog post on teaching social studies more effectively, the writer and a former social studies teacher, Bill Bigelow, offers his guidance for avoiding this pitfall. You have to remember, according to him, social studies is not only about chronicling events and memorizing dates, it's about questioning society, searching for patterns, and developing the tools to make the world a better place. So teaching social studies means showing how ordinary people have made a difference throughout history. Number five challenge, not providing robust resources for teaching complex topics. A recent survey confirmed that social studies teachers more so than other content area teachers are invested in teaching complex topics. Yet, in the same survey, both administrators and teachers acknowledge that teachers are often not adequately supported by supplemental resources or professional learning to teach these topics. Given recent shifts in culture and educational mandates, social studies are now more essential than ever to develop students' ability to engage with and thrive in a shrinking world. Global citizens need to be independent critical thinkers who are well-versed in diverse perspectives. And because those perspectives are hardly static, the best instructional content should prove flexible enough to capture the nuance of every story. It should go beyond the page and provide narratives that are representative of students' lived experiences, complexity notwithstanding, and seed jumping off points for appropriate informed action. The data show that social studies educators are leading the charge in addressing complex topics. Now, instructional content needs to catch up. In light of these pitfalls and the challenges they represent, it's time for teachers and school leaders 
to expect more out of their instructional content. Many of the pressures social studies teachers find themselves under are exacerbated by the shortcomings of legacy materials or the difficulties of sourcing content on their own, especially when they find themselves with less time and fewer resources to work with. Social studies should be supported by content that is authentic and representative of students that helps them recognize themselves in the past and present and which inspires them to examine current events like historians. When confronting the challenges of teaching social studies, teachers should have to make to do with materials that are old or self-sourced. They should equipped with high or they should be equipped with high quality, relevant, and authentic content that supports students engaging an ever-changing world. In coping with all these challenges, let me present to you also the tips for tackling for tackling controversial topics in social studies. Number one, we have to communicate with parents. Because when you're teaching controversy with objectivity, definitely we have to consider all these things that could involve the parents, especially, also, especially when we are giving tasks to be read or to be performed or to be recorded by our students. We have to keep parents informed about lessons or activities that may have a controversial aspect. For example, I want my students to watch the recorded video on martial law declaration by former President Ferdinand A. Marcos. So, in that note, I usually write a note in the notebook of the students to parents about the assignments and the reasons for such assignment, focusing on the values of such declaration and to guide their children on adult language as well as violent scenes reflected in the video. I felt that I had covered my bases and if a parent complained later, I could refer back to my note. Number two, communicate with your administrators or your principals or school head. What would be possible reasons why we need to communicate with our administrators? When I decided to field test lessons, for example, related to the martial of declarations, I usually emailed my uh, principal or my school head to let him or her know. I also asked him what he would suggest as far as telling parents about language and violence issues. He is the one who suggested sending a note home. Number three tip, inform without bias. In the 2016 presidential campaign of President Rodrigo de Roa Duterte, provided a great deal of news and controversy. So the best way that I found to deal with this with my politics and governance students was to approach things in an open yet professional manner, while at the same time not letting my class know my political learnings or which candidates I supported. Especially since many of the students I taught were preparing to cast their first ballot, I felt it was important for them to be armed with the information they needed to make an informed choice. Tip number four, make corroborating use a part of the assignment. In instances where the teacher wishes to have students research political or controversial issues, care should be taken to explain that not every website or blog is reviewed for accuracy. I have to teach my students to look for unusual claims, bias claims, and subjectivity in the information defined online. I suggest that any claim about politician, celebrity, or cause online 
they try to find another site that corroborates the original information for them to have a balanced and reliable information. Tip number five, if showing biased information, I have to keep it balanced. During the 2016 presidential or national campaign, no, I would occasionally show clips from various talk shows or parody that featured content about the candidates. I tried to balance this so that both, uh, both the candidates were featured roughly equally. In some instances, while I thought content was good or funny, I felt it better not to use it if it had something I might have considered off-color or overly controversial. Number six, avoid heavily biased news unless it is part of the lesson. I felt it was important that my students have an opportunity to watch the inauguration ceremonies for President Rodrigo Roa Duterte in June 2016. However, we viewed the swearing-in inaugural address on what I thought would be a more unbiased network. I would likely avoid letting students view content from what, from what might be considered a more biased network. Would it be GMA? Would it be ABS-CBN? Would it be TV5? Or other networks unless there was an overriding reason to allow them to view it. Tip number seven, review content thoroughly before sharing. Reviewing content thoroughly before showing, uh, showing it to the students is good. That is for us to avoid what? Any possibilities that the contents we are sharing are reliable, vital, and would make any sense to our students. We have to look for possible booby traps or content that might be objectionable or controversial. If you plan, you are much less likely to create an issue or worse, an unpleasant confrontation with a parent. With social studies, it's always controversial. So in conclusion, when social studies teachers frequently deal with what might be considered controversial content, with a little forethought and planning teachers can effectively avoid conflict with students, parents, and administrators. Let me add some concerns or top concerns of social studies teachers nowadays, particularly we are in the time of pandemic. Concern number one is for us teachers about breadth versus depth. Social study standards are often written so that it is virtually and impossible to cover all the required material in the school year. For example, in world history, the standards published by the National Council for the Social Studies requires us breed of material and it is impossible to do or to do more than just one touch on each topic. Concern number two in dealing with controversial topics. Many social studies courses deal with sensitive and at times controversial issues. For example, in world history, Teachers are required to teach about religion in American government, topics like abortion and death penalty can sometimes lead to hated or to heated debates. In these instances, it is an, uh, important for the teacher to maintain control over the situation. Concern number three, making connections to students' lives. While some social studies courses like economics and American government lend themselves well to making connections to students and their lives, others do not. It can be tough to connect what was going on in ancient China to a 14-year-old's daily life. 
So social studies teachers have to work very hard to make these topics interesting. Concern number four, need to vary instruction. Social studies teachers may find it easier to stick to one method of instruction. For example, they may generally present information to students through lectures because it can be difficult to cover the material without relying on such direct instruction. By contrast, some teachers may go to the other extreme and have mainly projects and role-playing experiences. The key to balance the activities and find a way to use different teaching methods to present the material. Concern number five, avoiding rote memorization teaching. Because most of teaching social studies revolves around names, places, and dates, it is very easy to create assignments and tests that do not, uh, that do not move beyond learning generally involves rote memorization but does not force students to engage in the kind of advanced critical thinking skills needed for true learning. Concern number five, presenting differing points of view. Social studies texts are written by humans and therefore are biased. We have to remember that. An example might be two American government texts that a school district is considering adopting. One text might have a conservative bent, while the other or the other may have been authored by a liberal political scientist. Whichever text the district adopts, a good social studies teacher will need to work to present alternative points of view. Further, history texts might describe the same event in a different way based on who wrote them. So this will be a challenge for teachers to deal with at times. And the last but not the least we have here, dealing with false knowledge. It is common for students to come to class with inaccurate historical or even current information that they were either taught at home or in other classes. So this is a problem for the teacher who will need to work to help students overcome preconceived notions. In social studies and indeed in any subject, a major hurdle in overcoming this kind of bias is getting students to buy into what the teacher is conveying. For a good social studies teacher, this requires knowing the subject well, showing enthusiasm, and using different modalities to keep the subject interesting for students. Speaking of the different modalities, we have heard already a lot of information provided already by the previous speakers. So you can actually choose from all those kinds of modalities. And we have to remember this, that no size fits all. There is no such thing as one size fits all. So whatever kind of modality you're going to use, you have to balance it. And you have to actually scrutinize it well, whether it fits or suits to the topic that we are teaching with the students. We have to remember that social studies is life. Social studies teaching is actually teaching lives, touching the lives, and, ev and even connecting the lives of our students with our way of dealing or comforting with them, especially so in this time of pandemic. So for any queries, you may contact uh, Dr. Ronaldo Ikabuan in this email address and the uh, telephone or CP or cell phone numbers for uh, more questions or more information about how to teach or how to bring in 
uh, phase social studies into the classroom more efficiently and effectively and definitely more interesting and lively. Good day and God bless everyone. Stay safe.